Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Relationship and Marriage, aka RIMA. My name is Enefiok Udonkang and I welcome you to this exciting topic today that we are going to dive into right now. The topic is the power and the purpose of agreement in marriage. The power and the purpose of agreement in marriage. Now, in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3, the Bible tells us, can two walk together? Actually, it's a question. Can two walk together except they agree? All right. Some interpretations say, can two people walk together on a set path except they agree? Now, before you got married, there was an agreement. You guys had an agreement. You agreed to get married to that person. And to stay in marriage and to fulfill the purpose of marriage, you guys need to agree more. More agreement. Now, agreement is the key to dominion in marriage. Agreement is the key to dominion in marriage. All right? It's the master key. When once two of you are on the same plane, on the same level, are in agreement, tremendous power is released, both in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. Tremendous power is released. So, agreement is something that you need to consciously work out in your marriage. Agreement brings about harmony. That's the important thing. It brings about harmony. And when there's harmony, then the oils are working well. Things start to work very, very well, smoothlessly, seamlessly. All right? Harmony does not mean that two of you should be doing the same thing. Agreement does not mean that two of you should be doing the same thing. Agreement is that two of you should be looking in the same direction, heading for the same goal, maybe using different parts, maybe using different methods, but everything has to be geared towards one direction. Now, what do you really need to agree on? Because, I mean, what do you really need to agree on? You need to agree on a lot of things, but I'm going to concentrate on three dimensions of agreement that you need to agree on. First, the spiritual realm. All right? Agreement in prayer. Agreement in prayer is powerful. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus promised us, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. And if two of you shall ask for anything, anything, an open check, I will do it for you. That was the promise that Jesus promised us and he keeps his promise. So that's a very, very powerful prayer. The prayer of agreement. When two spouse come together to pray, it's powerful. In agreement. Pray over one issue. Together, in agreement. Very, very powerful. You need to agree in the area of ministry. What area of ministry are you going to go into? All right? Are you going to go into full-time pastoring? Are you going to be a lay pastor? Are you going to be an evangelist? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? You must be doing something for the kingdom and you need to do it with your spouse. Not that you can't do it alone. Of course you can do it alone. But there's not much power in doing it alone. If you do it with your spouse, you're off. Like what I'm doing right now. Many of you have not met my spouse, but behind the scene, she is cooking things up. I'm telling you. And like I promised you earlier on, we'll be here in about two weeks' time. Yes, on our 10th anniversary, and we are going to be presenting this show together. So we are in agreement on what I am doing right here. And that's for the spiritual realm. Now, in the area of the soul, you need to agree. You need to agree on the direction your family is going to take. You need to agree in the direction your marriage is going to take. All right? You need to agree about a lot of things. Your values. You need to agree in the area of values because that, that's what causes a lot of problems too. Money area. How are you going to deal with money? You need to come to an agreement in these areas. 
basically things of the mind things of the emotion you need to come together in agreement for those things too the last area is in body you need to agree to set aside your bodies for each other set aside your bodies for each other the only reason scripturally why you should um, deny yourselves each other is given to us in first corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 and it says for the purpose of fasting and prayer and you must agree before you do that in the first place you must agree in a marriage definitely problems come along so sometimes the couples need to take out time to fast and pray about these things in agreement and that is the only time paul says that you should deny each other your bodies okay but even that must be done in agreement too so those are the three areas of agreement your values you must agree on your values that is why it is always said that it's best to marry someone from your tribe not like Ibo, yoruba and the rest of no someone from your same spiritual tribe so that you people share the same values. You people share the same spiritual outlook. Alright? The Bible says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. But I believe me, you can be unequally yoked even with a fellow believer. So, you must agree on all those things. Now, what are the benefits of agreement? First, it gives you strength. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 tells us that two is better than one why because they have a good reward for their labor right so when two of you are working together in agreement your strength is multiplied your results are multiplied at the end of the day encouragement that same scripture ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10 tells us that when two of you fall down or when one person falls down the other person is there to lift the other person up to encourage the other person when two of you are cheering each other on two of you are cheering each other on it gives you the morale to do whatever you need to do all right when two of you are in agreement on the path and direction you need to go this one is lifting this one up this one is encouraging this one on God, there is tremendous strength. And that encouragement, that investment brings about trust. Two of you will be encouraged to invest in your relationship, to invest in your marriage, to give your all to your marriage. And then equally, your emotions come together. By that investment, you are also investing in your emotions. You become more attached. You become more like one. In fact, agreement is the glue that helps us to become one as the Bible said that we should become one. When two of you are in agreement, God looks at you as one. And then, success, yes. When two of you are working together on any project, the chances are that you will succeed. The chances are that you will succeed. In fact, you have multiplied your chances of success simply by both of you working together in agreement. A defense for each other. All right? Two of you have someone that's got your back. Like they say, I got your back. When two of you are in agreement, this one always gets the other one's backs. The lapses of this one becomes the strength of this one. The strength of this one becomes, I mean, two of you just got your back to get the thing done. All right? Also, faith boosters. If two of you are Christians in agreement, you boost each other's faith. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. As you sharpen each other, you guys get better. You get better. You get better. You get better day by day. Then you overcome limitations. All right? When two of you are working together in agreement, you overcome limitations. Limitations that are there, you overcome it. Let me give you a story. Before we got married, me and my wife, we agreed that we will not have house house in the house. All right? Now, it was difficult keeping this, especially with children. But up till now, with three children on ground, we've been able to juggle our schedules together. Able to juggle our schedules together. This one covering this one, this one covering this one, this one covering this one. We just managed to, you know, juggle our schedule together to take care of our children and make sure our children do not suffer because of our decision. 
And God has always been graceful. God has given us grace to see it through that our children are not feeling the brunt of it all. But we know what we go through. We know we juggle each other's schedule, all right, in order to make this happen. And finally here, supernatural favor. The Bible promises, the same way two or three are gathered, God is there. If two of you shall ask for anything in my name, bam, it is done for you. In, in Psalm chapter 133, it says, How sweet and good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. All right? And at the end of that Psalm 133, it says there, that it is there that the Lord commands the blessings. So the blessings of God come when two of you are in unity. The devil, his primary job in the family is to cause this unity. Once he has, is able to cause this unity, then the favor of God will not rest on that family any longer and he has won the battle already. So when you are in agreement together, ah, the devil finds no way. There is no way for him to penetrate. The head cannot be broken between you people when you are in agreement. But as a final caveat to this message, it's not just enough for two of you to be in agreement. You must be in agreement and your agreement must be in sync with scriptures, in sync with the purpose of God. If your agreement is counter the purpose of God, then it's going to be counterproductive too. For instance, two of you may agree on married people to cohabit. <laughs> Are you going to tell me that God's blessing is going to come upon that? No. Cohabitation is not the plan of God. Marriage is. And so when you cohabit together, you agree to cohabit together. It is counterproductive. Both of you are not going to be happy at the end of the day, especially the lady. Very, very few cohabitations end up in marriage. I've seen a lot. I've heard a lot. And it doesn't work. One thing you must realize the devil is always trying to do is that he's trying to make single people to live like married people and married people to live like single people. That is his plan. As far as relationships and marriage is concerned, that is the devil's plans. And so he comes up with things like cohabiting. He comes up with things like dating, girlfriend, boyfriend. All these things are to make two single people to live together as if they are married or to behave as if they are married. And when, when they are get, getting married, he now stresses individuality. This one must have his room. This one must have his bank account. This one must have this. This one must have that. Separation together to live as individuals. That is a trick of the devil. But don't let the devil floor you. Don't let the devil trick you. You must stand your ground. When the people of Babel decided to come together to build a tower into the heavens, it was counterproductive. It was counterproductive to the plans of God. So what did God do? confuse their languages and that is what God does when agreement is done in a counter um, counter anti-God way let me put it that way in an anti-God way God confuses you he puts confusion there and that whole thing scatters so don't be caught up in that trap when you are coming together in agreement as a couple make sure it's in line with the plans and purposes of God for your life and then you will reap the benefits and thank me later. Thank you very much for listening to this message. Please, thank God, don't thank me for that. <laughs> thank you for listening to this message. Please, um, subscribe for this message, share it with your friends, and remember, in two weeks' time, me and my wife will be here live on this program. Actually, the 26th of this December, we'll be hosting this program together. Please send in your questions, if you have any questions, to ask us as a couple about our journey so far, because that's what we're going to share here. We'll share our journey, our challenges, our victories, and how God has taken us from where we were to where we are right now and how he's going to take us to where we ought to be. Thank you so much for listening to this message. Until next time on Rima, my name is Enefiok Udonka and I'm saying bye-bye and have a blessed week.